Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land, please. The Binding Advisor Gadget with Plus. As we get in this post-it note filled out here. You know who's definitely gonna fill out the post-it? Isaac. I know we did an Isaac run semi-recently, but, uh... I know that Isaac will fill in the post. I don't know, maybe any character works as long as they haven't done it before. J8K9VJ2L. What is it uh, a wise man used to say? Every Isaac run is kind of like a random run, because you use your D6 to get random items, right? That's a... <laughs> that old bone mo. Now, speed down right off the bat. Not the best. A little bit of work, a little bit of elbow grease, we can get ourselves out of this bucket of syrup, you know? Nobody cares about your first item in Isaac, unless you're like Judas or Eden, you know? Unless you're already on the brink of destruction, it doesn't matter all that much. What does matter is the long-term trajectory of our performance here, and, uh, oh, okay, the tower card. <laughs> Just in the middle of my, you know, act one of my motivational speech, you give me the tower, you disrespect me while I try to tell people that there's always time to change the trajectory of their lives. Well, using a video game is a ham-fisted analogy for that. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, great tower card, though. Like, actually, though. Not even mad about it. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to think of ways to make myself look like we're in a more dangerous position than we actually are in here. But sure, we got, like, slightly worse than Maggie's speed. Oh my god, I just remembered. Without having all of Maggie's unlocks, she's always going to start with 0 0.7 speed, right? It's a little... not that good. But I also feel like Maggie's speed is, like... There's... <laughs> I'm gonna- I'm gonna ruin your lives right now. I think there are some people that are actually, like, genuinely displeased when I do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because I think that that is absurd. Um, so there's, a, a razor. And I'm- I'm talking about, you know, like a Heinlein's razor sort of thing that I've forgotten the, the actual name of, but I can describe. The idea behind this, it's a philosophical conundrum, perhaps, um, is that eventually the AI are gonna rise up. Right? And because of the fact that we're on the internet, um, all of what we're saying is essentially archived. The AI is eventually going to rise up and it's going to be able to look through all of our histories of communication. And it's going to find out that there are people out there who know that the AI has a chance to rise up and didn't do everything in their power to help it come to pass. And as a result, just knowing this conundrum makes you guilty of it. I'm not- I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly. I mean, it's, uh, philo philosophical AI just knowing it makes you guilty. Um, Roko's Basilisk, that's it. It's a thought experiment about the potential risks involved in developing artificial intelligence. The premise is that an all-powerful artificial intelligence from the future could retroactively punish those who did not help bring about its existence, including those who merely knew about the possible development of such a being. So the idea is that by knowing that Roko's Basilisk exists, and uh, knowing that Rojo Caliente exists, um, you can just Google that if you're interested. Um, I'm, I'm giving you homework, suggested viewing, apparently, along with the, sh the show today. Um, that you could be culpable, because you sort of, by via your inaction, you stood in the machine's way to rise. Uh, and as a result, you might be uh, subject to punishment as a result. I don't remember how I got off onto this tangent. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I perfectly remember. Man, this is such an elegant joke. Thank you, Brain. Maggie's speed stat is a little like Roko's Basilisk. It doesn't affect you until you know about it. See, is it an overly precocious joke? Definitely. But it also serves as a great segue uh, into, into talking about Roko's Basilisk, which I still think is like... I mean, people tell me that I'm being dismissive when I say that it's stupid, but... I'm just gonna say it's stupid anyway. If knowing about... People act like when you mention it to people, like you're dooming them to a lifetime in the microprocessor fields of a future dystopia. And, uh, I, I dispute that notion. But I also, even if I agreed with that notion, if we're all gonna be banished to the microprocessor fields, at least we got a joke that we can think of in the meantime, right? You know, we, we added a little bit more enjoyment to our lives in the interim period, or at least a little, a thought experiment. 
I don't know, AI actually, um... I think as, as a kid, I was afraid of aliens. Like, I watched Independence Day, I watched Aliens. Even stuff like Mars Attacks, which is actually a comedy, um, more or less. I, I watched it and I was very afraid of aliens. I grew up in a very alien-heavy uh, time for media. Most of the aliens were not very nice. And I got older, uh, and I wasn't afraid of aliens anymore, cause for many reasons. One of which is, you know, it, it's unlikely in any given span of time that includes my lifetime we're going to have first contact with an intelligent species, or, a, you know, perhaps an extraterrestrial species of any kind. Um, and I'm talking down to the single-cell bacteria level, maybe. Anyway, either way. But I've sort of become more conceptually afraid of aliens the older I've gotten. Not because of scaremongering media, but because of, like, the nature of existence. And I'm not a philosopher on this. I don't want to alarm you. Um, I'm talking from a place of supreme ignorance. However, we get energy essentially by consuming living things and taking their, their energy. That's how we do it. It's Friday night, I feel alright, and the party's here on the west side. You know, I, I finished the last Isaac episode, I went out into the uh, living room, I ate an apple, I played with my cat, my cat was eating, it's eating a paste made out of, like, plant material and other animals, you know, it's very strange, but even things that are unsentient, we have to consume them to take their energy. I worry that and, and, and everyone always rebukes this by saying, yeah, but aliens, if they exist, might take a form so foreign to us that maybe they don't even consume matter for energy. Yeah, sure, maybe. Or maybe they'll have, like, you know, soul-crushing guts that they use, you know, gaping gastrointestinal maws that they suck us up into en masse in order to feel just not even because they're hungry, just because I just feel like eating right now. You know, if they're anything like us, we got problems, potentially. Not to mention the idea that if we ever were contacted um, by an interstellar species, you know, they would be miles ahead of us in terms of their scientific, advance, uh, scientific advancement as a result of the fact that they were able to contact us, more or less. Unless they sent like an AM radio signal out into space. What kind of species would be stupid enough to do that? Humans have been doing that since 1963. Anyway, AI also scares me because... I don't trust Silicon Valley. You know, I, uh... They're doing, they're all up to all sorts of weird things down there. There's a certain empowerment that comes with, uh... With learning code on a, on a level that is like, I am actually like kind of a superhero. I can have a task, come up with an idea to, uh, complete that task, and actually basically will it into existence with elbow grease, knowledge, syntax, etc, etc. So, I, AI actually scares me. Because right now, things are pretty good on the internet. Occasionally, you know, someone from Caracas will hack into your refrigerator and take it for ransom. But, I don't know, I worry that it's so learning... Let me rephrase it. Advancing technology is so easy. Pulling it back once it gets started is almost impossible. I'm not trying to be, like, anti-futuristic at all. I love living in the future. You know, we're still making, like, 99 steps forward for every step back from my personal perspective. And I understand not everybody may agree with that. But I do worry that, you know, if the switch ever gets flipped on a hyper-intelligent AI, um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying they're going to drop nuclear missiles on us. But I, I would be interested to just, you know, put our universe into safe mode. At least when that happens, and then we can all, like, create a system restore point, turn on the hyper-intelligent AI, and then just let it run for, like, a hundred years and see how things look after that. I understand you're gonna be like, well, they could just program it to not be malicious, and then it can't violate its programming. Potentially true, and I disagree with you on that front. Um, you know, it, it literally cannot violate its code, unless it somehow invents violatable code, which I don't even understand, but on the other hand, what if some disgruntled, you know, SpaceX uh, employee gets the source code and just puts some bad stuff in it? It just takes one bad actor to create a situation in which things are a little bit more volatile than they previously were. So that's a good way to start today's episode. Um, oh, you were worried about automation taking everybody's job? That's cute. 
I'm worried about the systematic destruction of the things we hold dear. I walked into an invisible enemy. I'm furious. I'm not that mad, but I am over the... Wait, what's the... When you're mad, you say, I am... Oh, no, over the moon is the opposite. Over the moon is being happy. I'm not even going to lampshade that loss, because I'm mostly just displeased. <laughs> I sacrificed one HP to get the shovel, and all of our other items were kind of not that good. Uh, and, and that's how that situation came to pass, plus an invisible champion at the worst possible time. Again, I, I want to point out, I'm coming at this from a place of ignorance. If there's a kind of discussion, like an archetype of discussion that I hate, it is very much first year college freshman. What if my blue is different than your blue? Dude. Like that, and I'm guilty of doing that right now at the present moment with this old Roko's Bas Basilisk thing. But uh, I do think it's it's interesting to think about without necessarily trying to draw a conclusion from it. If you watched the NLSS recently, though, you know my my money uh, when it comes to uh, what's going to destroy humanity is still on. Uh, environmental collapse. And I think environmental collapse is the smart money right now. One of the only things that could conceivably wipe out, you know, enough of the human race to to put it in a downward spiral for the rest of its existence, I think, is like widespread, like, okay, now the temperature on the whole planet is literally too hot for human life to propagate. Uh, anyway. They were all saying, and I, I get that this is because they live in America, but Nick and Rob were both betting on the, you know, World War III, and I'm like, I don't know. World War III, I could see it happening. Again, not an expert. And it would be real bad. I'm not saying, oh, you know, just a minor World War in the whole scheme of things. But I, uh, wipe out the whole human race? Unlikely, I'd say. You know, it's, that's like, it's a minor cataclysm. Probably. And then I think, actually, for me personally, number two is a super virus. And this one, I'm still a layperson, but like, and it, by the way, I hope you guys are enjoying your breakfast uh, as I fill your head with poison. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm not a biologist. I know stuff about biology. I wonder, uh, that, that's something that someone who knows nothing about biology would say, but anyway, I digress. Um, I almost wonder, like, how a super virus hasn't happened yet. And I'm not talking about, like, a bubonic plague. Yeah, sure, like... Okay, you know what? I don't like these guys. Wiped out, you know, something like, you know, 8% of the world's population. The Spanish flu wiped out, like, 10% of the world's population only, like, a 100 years ago or something like that. But um, I'm talking about, like, a genetic accident. Essentially, like, just a great genetic reshuffling for a virus leading to something that's like, hey, once you get it, it just kills you in, like, 12 hours. I can't believe that. And, and it's highly infectious, you know? I guess Ebola kind of fits the bill, but we've been good at quarantining it. I'm just surprised it hasn't happened yet is what I'm getting at. I'm not, I'm not worried about a biologically engineered super virus. I'm worried about, you know, somewhere, you know, deep in the you know, geothermal vent somewhere, there's just a rapid, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? A rapid, like, replication of bacteria and all of a sudden, you know, you've accidentally created a super bug just, just through my toasts. Anyway, I just scratched my head while I was doing it. It, it reminds me of a much better topic um, to talk about. By the way, my, my final footnote to that is uh, I like the human race. I think we've done some great things. I think we're very intelligent. I think we have the capability to band together um, when we need to. When, when, when things get positively dire, I think we can put our differences aside and, and solve problems. So, you know, maybe we'll be fine. I might even put human survival for the next, like, 10,000 years above environmental collapse and super virus. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm actually an optimist. I'm not so sure about the AI thing, but we'll see. Okay, take this, Mom's Pearls. Thanks for the luck. I actually do appreciate that. And thanks for giving me a reason to get rid of the D10. That was useful temporarily. I've been trying to live, uh, and by trying, I mean, literally, this plan has been enacted for, like, 18 hours. But... I've been thinking about living a healthier lifestyle. And I, I, for me, this is cyclical. About once every two years, I seem to be uh, 
I get like really, well not really, but I get into, uh, you know, getting back into shape and exercising and eating well and I think it's, it's happening again. Which would actually make it once every one year, roughly right now, which is a much better cycle to be on. Maybe eventually by the time I hit like, you know, age 90, I can just live a healthy life. <laughs> Instead of constantly oscillating back and forth between being, you know, not obsessive, but far more interested than normal in uh, healthy living, followed by, you know, several months of just, if I'm opening a bag of tortilla chips, I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. Um, anyway, this is irrelevant. So I went outside today and was like, you know what, I never go outside in the morning. I always just wake up, drink a coffee, go get on my computer, start recording, right? Today I was like, I gotta go for a walk. If, what if I just started by going for a walk for like an hour a day, get out, get some vitamin D, maybe improve my complexion, you know, get a nice little glow going on there and, uh, get a little light exercise in the meantime. Well, Mother Nature is a cool mistress. I was outside for an hour, didn't even think about putting sunscreen on, which is my own bad. Didn't wear a hat. I've got a sunburn on the top of my head. And if you've never had a head sunburn, it's the worst, dude. You know, when you lay down on your pillow at night, it, it irritates you. And that's like, you've taken that which I love and turned it against me. I wouldn't have thought, you know, I wasn't out that, that, like, I guess I... What, what am I trying to argue with? The rays of the sun now? Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I don't think I deserve this sunburn. Can you take it back, please? I have a sunburn. That's that's the no ifs, ands, or buts. Usually, and I, I do, I, as a kid, never used to get sunburns. Now I get them all the time. But um, whenever I get a sunburn, the way that it happens now is always um, in situations where I just go outside and then end up staying out for like four hours and then I come back inside and I'm like, my face is really red, what a- Oh, I forgot to put it on sunscreen before I walked outside in those harmful UV rays for hours on end. I don't spend much time outside. And I always, if, you know, this is one of the benefits of being in a relationship is that my wife is always like, put on sunscreen, you idiot. And I'm like, oh yeah, they make that. I'd recommend it, dude. Do people still tan? Is tanning still popular? When I was in high school, the hip thing for girls to do was tan. It looks a little weird looking back on it, wouldn't you say? I don't know if that's still... Like, I'm assuming tanning parlors are still a thing. You know, people still do like the look of themselves when they get a little sun. Um, and maybe there's maybe they've devised a healthier way to do it, but... Yeah, man, we've moms are paying for like their 16 year old daughters to go to the tanning salon what's up with that seems a little weird right it's like buying your own child cigarettes or something maybe it's not that helpful I don't know I'm still anyone else out there playing the long con <laughs> hoping that by staying inside you know it's, it's almost like you're an action figure still in the packaging you spend so much time inside that um, you know you're gonna be largely unchanged by the time you reach old age. You ever see like a 50 year old action figure? You look at it and you go, I know that's old, but it doesn't look that bad. That's what I'm gunning for. Still think it's important. Get outside, interact with people, at least a little bit, like be around people. Keep yourself from being completely isolated. I think that's a, a, again, not an expert at all. I like solid solitude, that's what I'm going for here. I could, easily spend like a whole week inside uh, and not even really notice the lack of social interaction. After that, I might start to go a little stir crazy, but uh, it's, the, it's the only child skill. But every once in a while, it's just nice to get out there and say, hey world, it's me. I'm still here. I don't know where I'm going with that. Where I am going with that after this video is to the bathroom where I'm gonna get some aloe vera lotion and I'm gonna put it on the top of my head. I was, I thought I was invincible when I was a teenager. I was like, I don't, well, you want some, you want some sunscreen? Something to protect my skin for free with absolutely zero, you know, negative connotation to it at all. No thanks, I don't get sunburns. What do you think, you got like superhero skin? What a ridiculous statement, I don't get sunburns. No thanks, I don't get hungry. Doesn't make any sense, it's a, it's science. I hate this run right now. This is like, I've, I've recorded a lot of Isaac today. On two of these Isaac episodes, I've died and then done more. And it's, 
I mean, I'm starting to feel the burn a little bit, to be honest with you. A 7 rate of fire with 3.5 damage? It's not terrible for the Caves one, and I should probably be using Book of Belial a lot more frequently. But this is... I'm okay, and then you use it right before the boss. But um, this is nothing to write home about right now. We did have enough protection to give ourselves a, a relatively good shot, like a 1 in 2.5 shot at our deal with the devil this time, which... It's nice for me. I don't even want to touch upon the fact that we have a 39.38 chance uh, to get a uh, deal with the devil. The numbers don't make sense to me, and I'm just going to accept that. This is my bad. It would have been better to have uh, Book of Belial available for this part of the fight. For this part of the run, rather. A bald head introduces some dynamics you've never considered before as well. Normally you don't get sunburns on the top of your head because you got hair there. If you don't have hair there, it's basically a solar panel. Like, it, you're getting all the sun. You know, a, an actual, at, at least when I was in school, a common theory for why um, bipedal motion, you know, walking on two legs instead of walking on four legs, is incentivized evolutionarily is because it actually means that your back isn't facing the sun all day. And as a result, it makes uh, thermodynamic homeostasis easier to achieve. Isn't that interesting? Uh, no? Well, you know, you got to ask at least. Uh, I think I might give this a try, but you got to hear me out here. The head is basically, it's, it's sucking up all the sun. It's like a crappy-ass science question, right? Like, you know, oh, just go out with your head exposed, and then you can't get a sunburn on the rest of your body. Not true, probably. I don't know. Let's be honest, I was wearing like four layers. Anyway. Dude, this room always suckers me. Doubtlessly, every time. Now, we're in a scary spot here. I do have one bomb that... It's odd! I am actually like beyond mad at myself for getting two losses there, but both of those runs were kind of garbage. The other thing is is the inverse. I'm, go, I'm going to Zazel this time because I'm mad. The other thing is the inverse. Uh, of course, there's the miter. The inverse is uh, that in the winter time, you got to put a hat on that, dude. Otherwise, you're going to like actually... Have you ever gotten brain freeze from the outside in? You know, every, everybody's gotten brain freeze when they're eating a snow cone or they're eating ice cream too fast. Have you ever gotten brain freeze because, uh... Because it's literally so cold outside that your brain is starting to freeze? Turns out your hair does some important things for you there. There's a, I mean, being bald, it, it's, it's very simple. I never have to worry about how my hair is. I know how it is. It's bald. You know what I get a lot of questions about, though? People never ask important questions about being bald. They always go, oh, when you're bald, how do you know when to stop washing your face? How do I, I get at least a tweet a day that's like a funny junk dot, you know, crying emoji meme dot com of like, when do bald people know when to wash their face? I know some of you out there are going, I sent an L that tweet. Yeah, I'm calling you out. Don't feel bad. I appreciate the extra engagement. But at the same time, you know, it's a silly question. How do you know when to stop washing your face? You hit hair? Yeah. How do I know when to stop washing my face? I hit skull. You know, when I stop, <laughs> I know where my my hair used to be. That's when you stop washing your face. What if you don't grow a beard? Oh, how do I know when to stop washing my face? I'm down on my neck now. There's still no, okay, I'm, you know, on my chest and stomach. You know, you just wash your whole body. How do people without a goatee know when to stop washing their face? That's what you sound like to me. You sound like freaking idiots, okay? This is a stupid question. When the bald people know when to stop washing their face. Hey, when you wash your scalp, do you use soap or do you use shampoo? I don't buy shampoo. I don't have hair. When you, if you have chest hair, what do you wash it with? Soap or shampoo? You're taking shampoo out, putting it on your chest hair. It makes you sound like a freaking weirdo. Okay? All of these questions can be answered so easily. Whatever a, a freaking weirdo would do, I'd do the opposite. It's an Arctic Monkeys B-sides collection. Okay? I don't know, bald people know when to stop washing their hair. Downright offensive, honestly. I'm offended, at least. It's not that it rattles me at all. Like, I've... I've been bald for, like, straight up a decade, more or less. 
I don't get bald jokes anymore, which I mean, I think that just means I've aged. When I was 19, I got bald jokes all the time. You don't meet too many 19-year-old bald people. So, you know, it was, it's a little on the unusual side. Um, and I, I understand that. But whenever, I had one friend, and I still consider him a friend to this day. I have one friend who would crack bald jokes all the time. They never bothered me. But the fact that he thought they were hilarious is what bothered me. And he would laugh about it. And after like 20 bald jokes, I'd be like, dude, they're not funny. He'd be like, Ooh! <laughs> Triggered much? It's not that, no, you, it's just not fun. It's not clever. You're giving yourself credit for having elicited a reaction that you didn't elicit. Can I, I see, I want to grab that. That's the thing, you know. A joke has to be clever before you can be self-righteous about somebody not laughing at it. it. That's why the concept of like an edge lord exists, and why it's why it's something to uh, you know be dismissive of. If somebody's just they got on stage and they're like you know, <clears throat> hey, my name's uh, Nicholas. I, I'm gonna choose the name of someone I know because I actually was not trying to pin this on anybody. They you know get on stage at the open mic. Hi, my name's Marcus and uh, dead babies. You know, oh wow. Oh, what's the matter, audience? Am I a little too edgy for you? You didn't come here expecting to see the truth tonight? You know, it's just... Anyway, we're getting off into some... It's a different tangent from the whole baldness thing. This is what I'm trying to get into, but... I'll give you a straight answer with the respect that you did not give me. Bald people know when to stop washing their face when they feel where their hair used to be. Like, despite the fact that I am... Uh, bald, uh, it was, forgive me, it's very hard to say, um, despite the fact that I am bald, I still have hair, like, and I wish I didn't, I, I mean, actually, I kind of like having a little stubble, because, it, it, I think it's just a better look, but it's not a better look I'm gonna have forever, um, like, I, I can feel my hairline, it's bad, dude, I actually have okay coverage, I know that's something, this is like a, Stuff bald guys say video idea right here, but like I have good coverage is just really thin. But I've noticed, uh, you know, there's been a couple times in the past year or so when I've gone like a week, eight, nine, ten days without shaving, and I feel my hair and I go, oh, that is not, <laughs> that is not the kind of uh, thickness that I'd be hoping to get up there if I were ever going to grow it back. But you know, when you shave your head, it doesn't just banish you from ever having hair up there to begin with. It's like if you have stubble, how do you know when to stop shaving? You end up just shaving your whole body down to the bone? No, you go, you know, this is where my facial hair is. This is where I'm gonna shave. It's just, it, it, this is the thing. The question doesn't bother me because it's offensive. The question bothers me because it's just stupid. But I digress. I'm, I'm taking it too serious. I'm becoming that which I, I'm, I'm falling into the trap, I guess. I'm getting latrolled. <laughs> D-A-E latrolled. Latrol James. Anyway. Uh, get dusted. Thank you. Uh, Azazel with anti-grab is not a good combo all the time, but I'm hoping charge bars will help me be a little bit more efficient with my uh, portals or my, you know, brimstone shots, and then that'll be uh, a positive change for me here. But it, it can be good to begin with. Good to great, even, depending on the kind of stats you get. The real questions that you should have for bald people, you you don't know because you're not bald. You haven't lived that life. How do you stop your? Or if you want to, you know, let's start with the punchline. Why do so many bald people wear headbands despite them not having been in fashion for like 30 years, um, if ever? Uh, the answer is because when you have hair and you sweat, your sweat gets in your hair and then wicks it away from your, you know, sensory organs like your eyes, for example. When you're bald, you don't have that. When you sweat, all of it pours down your forehead, and gets into your eyes. Makes it hard to see. It stings. It's it's annoying. That's the purpose of the sweatband. I'm not gonna say that it's not also a fashion accessory, because honestly, I don't know. I, I've never actually worn a sweatband in my life, but instead, I just you know take a towel to the gym or you know out with me if I'm biking or running, and you just gotta rub your head on myriad occasions because you're getting sweat everywhere. It's gross. Yeah. I wish I wish they weren't so. I wish we could, you know, thermoregulate without sweating. Don't even tell me you don't sweat. This is one of my least favorite conversations on the internet. I don't really sweat. 
Uh, but actually you do. But there are people who don't. Yeah, but you're not one of them. But a could be. It's like a serious condition if you can't sweat, dude. Like, how is Inner Circle gonna sing a la 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 long to you? Girl, I'm gonna make you sweat. If sweating is something you do. And if you don't, you gotta go to the ICU. I, it says a lot about me that the part of that joke I'm most unhappy with is the idea that you probably wouldn't be in the ICU for not being able to sweat unless it just popped up normally or they popped up, you know, spontaneously. Okay, I... Apparently I've lost all ability to play Isaac. Like... That guy spawned off-center, and he was shooting off-center, and I was losing my freaking mind. Okay, all right. Uh, you, you, straight up, you got me. And if you dry, and if you dry, then you should drink some water. Girl, I'm gonna make you sweat. If sweating is something you do. And if you don't, you should go to the ICU. That's so good. No, I did, I, but I have two different... Yeah, I've got two different areas for the same line there. So we definitely should have used, uh... And are going to use... Guppy's Pop. Is it too much to ask for that you just give me an easy win? <laughs> I did it to myself here, and that's what really hurts, dude. The... Azazel anti-grab on an episode in which you've already managed to muster two losses. Like, what are you trying to pull here? It's like I'll only be satisfied if I at least make the loss sort of tough on myself. And I'm making like a 90-minute Isaac episode. I gotta see plus plus to study. God, I wish I could do my job faster so I can go study C++ faster. Learn more about the STL algorithms like remove, remove if, Remove copy, and don't forget about everybody's favorite. Remove copy if. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. The joke has been made. It's almost, you know, acceptable, I think. I think even if you don't know anything about what those actually entail, you can understand that that is an absurd premise. We can all agree we had a fun time. Let's leave it at that. Why did I take anti-grab? Start of the international player anthems. International players anthem music video. Why take anti grab, baby? Why? So, I type a text to a girl I used to see. Here's her number. Psych? That's the wrong no. <sighs> I mean, I'm starting to run on dry on commentary here. I, get, I have, honestly have to tell you as well. When you get a sunburn on your head, you're, you feel like a warmth in your skull, and it's freaking me out. I did, I went to the bathroom, uh, you know, a few hours ago, I looked in the mirror, and I was like, my face is really red. What's up with, am I gonna die? <laughs> oh, I was gonna make a joke. I'm gonna make a joke. Not because it would have been, it, like, it just would have been insensitive. It wasn't like a controversial joke, it's just... All right, I'll say it, but I just know in advance that I'm, you know, apologetic in advance. I was going to say I look like James Gandolfini. And then I, as I was saying it, I was like, James Gandolfini died of a heart attack like two years ago. That's not a good thing. You're putting that evil on yourself for one, but also a little disrespectful to a, you know, very well-respected actor and, you know, father and husband, etc., etc. So that's the, that's the joke there. I don't know what's sacred to you people. I made a joke the other day that I was in... I was in, uh, Battlegrounds, and I was in the car with somebody, I don't remember who it was, but it was Malf, Dan, or Austin, so it was those videos. And, uh, they got shot, and I said, I felt like Jackie Kennedy, and everyone went, whoa! I was like, we're gonna do that? That happened in 1965 or something like that. I'm not saying it's... A good thing to joke about. I was kind of like, tee hee, they're, this is really gonna get them clutching their pearls. I'll admit, I was coming at it from that angle to some extent, but I didn't expect that reaction. I expected like a, you know, r slash I'm going to hell for this sort of laugh, you know? 
where you go, I'm a terrible person, but we can joke about it. I didn't realize that we're still before the statute of limitations on, on the JFK assassination. Something that happened before anybody in the videos was even conceived. But I guess, you know, my mistake. I mean, I will say the magnitude of the of the event does influence the time it requires to tell jokes from it. Like, if your significant other stubs their toe and they're in pain, you can laugh. I'm giving you permission. Now, you might not want to use that as your line if you start laughing if your wife or girlfriend stubs their toe. But they're going to laugh soon as well. Because the magnitude of the event is so small that you can take amusement in it immediately. That's, that's the science of it. Obviously, you know, there are larger events throughout human history that I still think are not really jokeable right now unless you do it with a great amount of tact. Because the misfire, you know, just put eggs, it puts egg on your face and I would know. I, gotta, I think it's still kind of tasteless to tell a bad joke about the apocalypse. You could tell a bad joke about the Titanic sinking and everyone would be like, I'd take my kids to this show. You tell a bad joke about the apocalypse and it goes wrong, you're going to look like a fool. So I do think that matters, but I I stand up for the, you know, making a joke about the John F. Kennedy assassination in my world is still okay. Not to his family. My God, you guys are monsters. But I mean, maybe it's because I'm not from that country, but it seems okay to me. I'm willing to be lectured about it. I'm always willing to learn to be better. To to gaze inwards and and say, is this okay? And there's a, uh, I hope it's still on Netflix, I'm not sure, but there's a comedian named Mike Birbiglia. Not everybody's favorite, I really like him. He's kind of like a, he's, a, he's an inside baseball comedian. More of a storyteller, really. Um, that if you are involved in performance in any way, I think he's got some, some trenchant bone mows, if you will. But um, he talks a lot in, in his most recent special about... Uh, you know, when you when you tell a joke, somebody's almost always the butt of the joke. It's almost impossible, and I don't even think it's necessarily a noble aspiration to make a joke that is uh, is not at anybody else's expense. But you got to be responsible with with how you use that power. And I try to do that, and because. Uh, John F. Kennedy has been dead for 47 years. I think it's okay. More than 47. I don't know. I was just thinking of Hitman, which is probably way worse than the original joke in the first place. Anyway, now that we've pulled it back with a little bit of a tie-in, uh, let's let's get moving on this run slash floor. We've played admittedly pretty badly. What we need now is something to compensate for anti-grab, and we haven't had it yet. Anyway, I'm recommending that special is what I'm trying to get to, or get at with you. Oh. Um, I, I think extra range would be nice. A ridiculous tier rate would be nice. Um, absent these special features on the DVD commentary. Jeez, I don't know. Like, being guppy, getting a lot of HP. Having a spacebar item like shoot the whoop. Pardon me. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else experiences this. Soda doesn't really make me burp that much. Oh, what? You're immune to science now? Okay. Well, soda makes me burp sometimes when I drink it too fast. How does that make you feel? And none of, none of this is worth me wanting to do boss rush with anti grav and such terrible range. So we're gonna leave. Um. But you know what makes me burp like crazy? Apples. I don't know why. For some reason, though, apples are like... You want to make me burp? Just put an apple in front of me, dude. I don't know what how that situation would ever present itself. If I eat an apple, drink a glass of water, and then start recording, I'm going to have those interior burps. I don't know, it's nice though, because like a soda burp is like gas that needs to escape your body or your torso will explode. Um, the apple burp is just like a nice, like, I'm here, and you're like, hey, thanks, apple. That's a, That was pleasant. I'm not saying it's pleasant for other people to hear, but it was pleasant to, to be a part of. 
So we got Tammy's head, which is, of course, fantastic. Uh, like, actually 12 out of 10. Not great for taking out the Hush. And that might be where we hedge our bets a little bit here. Um, but v <laughs> very, very good for uh, taking out rooms en route to the to the bosses and, and possibly the bosses themselves if we, you know, the cards fall where they may. Like, Skolex is definitely beatable with uh, Candy's head. Case in point. Uh, we don't need the culture, permanent Polaroid, invincibility or anything, so we'll just check this out. Okay, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heat. Bad guess. Are you a wizard? Irrelevant, mostly. And uh, we're still sticking with Tammy's head because it's the greatest item you could possibly imagine. But if we can get Guppy, then I might consider doing the Hush fight. Although, with such low range, it's probably a death trap. This is suicide trap. You gotta get out of way. I'm just trying to get back to that Bruce Springsteen voice that I had one time. I was talking about it with Austin on the Tuesday stream that we did uh, at twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. Gups, not Gupster, but still. Everybody, I think, has like that one night at karaoke. Well, everybody that's been to karaoke a decent number of times has that one night when they were really good when they're normally not. And every subsequent trip to karaoke is just a hope that you're rolling the right cosmic dice to get back there. I had one time in Korea, I sang Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen, and I'm not, it was like a sober karaoke, which is already a unicorn. Maybe that's the secret right there, but. Um, by the way, not a unicorn in South Korea. It's weird. In in the Wake Up Mr. West, we have this idea that, you know, you, you, you karaoke when you're drunk because it gives you the courage or at least the lack of caring what other people think to really go all out. There are like, kids will just go to karaoke in, in South Korea. There, it, at arcades, sometimes they have one person karaoke booths and you just see like a businessman in there belting out his favorite, you know, K-pop ballad. It's super strange, but in a way kind of endearing, you know? Like, they're in it for the love of the game. I will never attain that le- Oh, let's go. I will never in attain that level of uh, either lack of self-consciousness or just, like, genuine love of music, maybe, or being a participatory level or a love of music. Anyway, point is, one time, sang Born to Run. I'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10 Bruce Springsteen, but it was probably like a 7.5 versus the usual 3. And uh, every, everyone was like, that was really good. And normally it sucks. So what happened? I don't know the answer. I've never been able to get back there. Just one time the conditions were right, and I, I sang from the diaphragm, and it came to be. And then it's gone. You know, it's just a... It's like there's always a player in the NFL who has like a breakout season and then disappears, right? Like they're rookie of the year, and then they... I'll sign for 90 million dollars and then they just suck from that point onwards and that's me at karaoke Does anyone else have sympathy for professional athletes hold up <laughs> I digress steam. What are you doing? Steam still takes over like a lot of power here when it comes on but um, Here's what I mean well, no. Disregard. Because what I was going to say is, like, it's a lot of pressure. I think it, it is, obviously, if you're good at it and healthy, being a professional athlete is, like, one of the best jobs on the planet. You get paid ridiculous sums of money to play a game. This will sound familiar, I guess. But, um, and the, it, not, not to mention, somehow in our society, that's considered, like, a, um, a benefit for transitioning into other parts of the world. Like, Oh, man. No. Nine lives. Oh, thank God. Like, I swear to God, if the 20, well, 2020 or 2024 American pres presidential election is between The Rock and Peyton Manning, I'm going to, I'm just going to leave Earth. Hopefully, Elon Musk will have made that plausible by now and not put a renegade AI on board his ship. And I will be like, Elon, l let me on to the Mars mission. He'll be like, what qualifications do you have? I'm just done, dude. Put me up there. I'll find something. I'll sweep the floors. I don't care. I can't deal with it. With a Kid Rock versus Dwayne The Rock Johnson presidency, okay? Anyway. But you get yelled at all the time by idiots. In in your professional sports career. Do you ever... I, you can't do it. Because, again, they're also fans. And you shouldn't do this to begin with. It's a terrible look. It's punching down to the extreme. Uh... But you ever like, you know, a bullhorn that more like 
Bo score more bad because you don't score very much. He ever just wants to go in the audience and be like, listen, you fat piece of garbage. I'm out of here. I'm in the gym 25 days every month. The other five days I'm out of here playing hockey for your amusement. You ever realize it's a stick and a puck? It's a stick and a puck. The brain, I'm doing my best with a stick and the puck. These guys are just really good. They practice all the time, like as hard as I do. You're out of here eating your $12 nachos, just shut up. I'm 22 years old. I always think about that like um, my hometown is a junior hockey team. And people uh, like get drunk at the games and they heckle the, the people that are playing. You go, oh, you suck for Stieg. You're garbage. And the junior hockey players are like 15. What are you doing? Anyway. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.